Isn't she so cute? I am using cute to supplant meager. <laughs> Welcome back. Today, we are going to be talking about a sought after brand, sought after by me at least. The brand is called Dear Dahlia. Dear Dahlia, it makes me think of the Dear Diary, like the cat video, I'll just stick, I'll just stick a clip in. Dear Diary, it is three in the morning. The authorities have closed the door to the bedroom. As a last resort, I will stand post for the rest of the night and sing the song of my people. So I was going to do a first impression of this, but right after I started filming, there was a man outside building a fence and he had a nail gun and a chainsaw. <laughs> Just get it out of your system, buddy. <laughs> and he really ruined my plans, but he also is very efficient and he finished within like 30 minutes. And so I tried the whole face of makeup on already and it's actually gonna be good because I have some better thoughts to be able to offer you guys as we go. So I was in pursuit of Dear Dahlia. They are a K-beauty brand that is cruelty-free and vegan, I think vegan. <laughs> I think vegan. They're just somebody that popped up on my feed, you know, not necessarily advertising to me, but like an account that was really pretty. And I was just like, okay, like these are some gorgeous collections of pinks and purples and peaches and things like that. And the set that I ended up going for, and I will kind of fill you guys in too on my entire like buying process because it was a bit of, it was a bit of a jungle when I got into it, but uh, I ended up going for this like pink collection, the blooming edition, and it was about $180. And it actually didn't take that long to ship, maybe like a week and a half. I was expecting a really long time, but you guys can be the judge after we do all this as to whether or not you think that this is worth $180 to $200 because yes, there are a lot of things that are in this collection, but there are also a lot of things that they sent me that are not useful. There's like this whole flower of sponges and there's like a little notebook, you know? And there's just this like tiny hand mirror. It all feels very kid makeup to me. And at the same time, just very like, we gave you some things, like never mind whether I need those things. So we're going to do a full face today. I have their cushion foundation. I have an eyeshadow palette. I have this little blush compact that's a cream and a powder. I have a lipstick and a lip gloss, and we will be kind of filling in the blanks with other things that I have on hand. And I will be kind of talking to you guys through it. And then we can decide together whether this is magical or tragical. Let's get started. How y'all doing? Y'all doing good? I woke up this morning and I walked out and I was like staring at my husband and he's like, what? I was like, I don't know. I was expecting a fanfare. I'm up before 9am. I don't know about you guys, but I've just been staying up a lot later and sleeping a lot later. So Monday just hits a little different. So anyway, this is the compact cushion. I do believe I only got one cushion in here. A lot of times these things do come with extra cushions. I could be wrong. We'll look at the actual set. I have a lot of new makeup and it's all in one box together. So it is entirely possible that I'm not counting properly, but Main first impression here is this smells like lavender oil and it really doesn't take much lavender oil in order to smell like lavender oil, but this does definitely have a strong lavender oil fragrance. I got the shade Peach Ivory, much like most K-Beauty. I don't think there's like a wildly large shade range in this, so I wouldn't expect it necessarily to accommodate most people, but I did manage to find Peach Ivory, which works pretty well for me. This is also what I would call a skin tint. I said we weren't going to do any more skin tints or at the least that I wasn't going to be buying any more skin tints. And little did I know I already had another one in my possession. So this is definitely low coverage kind of serum. Some people might say that that is very typical for a cushion. I've tried lots of cushion foundations in my life and they are not always low, low coverage. Sometimes they are like really, really thin, but like miraculously high coverage. So you never know. The overall aesthetic though of this, I feel like is that it is good at showing your skin 
when possible. Like the glitter eyeshadows do a good job of being translucent. And so you can play with color, but you can also dial back and just like let your skin show through. And you can control the coverage with concealer and things like that, but you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get much coverage out of this foundation. It's just not gonna happen. I am glad that I already tried this once though, so that I can kind of give you guys a better idea of how I prefer to wear it because it did come with a cream blush and a powder blush and it came with powder eyeshadows, but it doesn't come with any kind of powder and it doesn't come with a concealer or anything. And I ended up kind of going powder cream hybrid in certain cases. And so I will, uh, I'll get to kind of show you guys that. This feels really lovely on my skin. I'm not gonna lie. Of course, a lot of people have major, major ah, sensitivity to lavender oil. Don't buy this <laughs> if that's the case for you. I just pop myself in the face with that. I'm like reflecting light at this point. It's soups dewy, soups dewy. Very, very pretty though. Like for that nice, you know, K-beauty skin texture, you're definitely getting that from this. So I guess I could store this in here, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna take my jacket off. <sighs> and then I just look like a newborn, I'm all all just one shade of beige. I'm going to go in with some color corrector, some concealer, a little bit of contour, and I'm gonna zoom through it because none of those things exist in the collection that I bought from them. contour going. I am definitely like attracting light right now. I kind of think I should turn my lights down. Is that a little bit better? But anyway, I'm going to actually powder this and for powder, I'm going to use the Ilia Fade Into You Soft Focus Finishing Powder. This is just one of my favorite powders for an otherwise dewy face of makeup for not killing all of the dewiness, but making it able to tolerate a little bit more powder on top. Corn based, be careful if you are sensitive to corn. I am not. If you are sensitive to corn, the Wouter is pretty similar in the ability to use it on top of dewy faces of makeup and it doesn't get cakey looking and it doesn't break up too badly and that's from Glossier. So that is a corn-free option. 10% off down below as always. <laughs> that is very nice. I like that so much. Hello? How's it going? Mm -hmm. My CPA called and that was what that was. And so I went ahead and did my bronzer and my brows because again, neither of those things is in this collection. So that lets us jump right in on blush. Isn't she so cute? I am using cute to supplant meager. It's so tiny for someone who loves blush. This is definitely a very, very small dose of blush. So you do end up with this hilarious mirror on both sides. Everything's just so miniature. And you have a powder blush and a creme blush, and we're going to use both. So I'm going to go, you know, kind of K-beauty here and uh, and go ahead and put this kind of up closer to my eyes. I'm going in with the powder, obviously, and we'll go in with the cream kind of last and sort of just kind of dab it on on top and try not to disturb everything underneath. And I am even dabbing this a little bit instead of buffing just because I don't want to necessarily disturb all that stuff that I just worked so hard on on my complexion. And it's not like the most bulletproof right now just because well, I only put that Ilia powder on top. It's not necessarily like a long wearing situation. I will say, even for a powder, it's like super soft and finely milled. It's very, very nice and pretty, but you can see also it's like a really, really pale pink. 
It is just like a girly, the whole situation is very, very girly and feminine and springy and like cottage core, you know? But uh, I do really like it. And the cream one is a more intense coral. It's actually very, very pretty, but it does take kind of some work to build this color up. So that's pretty. I think that we will go in with the cream now. We might as well try and use some of these silly little sponges. I didn't do this last time, but we'll see. I don't think that this is the kind of sponge that you soak in water. You can see that this is definitely more of an orangey coral shade. It's very, very pretty. Still, uh, if I didn't have these little sponges on hand, I don't think I would go, oh my gosh, how am I going to apply this? I need some tiny sponges in the shape of petals. like. Probably not. But then again, who knows, maybe this will be your only makeup. I think that, you know, this is meant to be kind of a an all-in-one set. Sorry about my dog. This is all he has to do right now is protect the house. Must protect. Okay, so V pretty, definitely feeling very springy and pink and whatnot. Let's jump in on the eyeshadow palette, shall we? This is very, very cute. The whole situation is very, very cute, but this is especially very, very cute. You've got this big shade right here that I guess you could argue is also a blush. The palest shade is this, well, I guess that's the palest shade. The second palest shade is just this very pretty matte pink. And it only goes kind of as deep as this sort of warmish chocolate brown. And then you have these really interesting little like mixed up trichrome kind of shades. They're very, very cool. So this I found to be actually really lovely and easy to work with. I'm going to use the brush that they gave me, but first I'm going to start by just setting the whole eye area with my big brush from Wayne Goss. Makes things very, very easy. No sense in belaboring one shade going all the way across. And I don't know if you can see that, honestly, but it does a really good job of smoothing everything out. I feel like, you know, I haven't tweezed my eyebrows in a minute. Things aren't necessarily as tidy as they could be, but it did a really good job of not accentuating texture up there. It's just a really creamy formula. Then I'm going to go into my, I guess my lid here with the kind of lightest pink. Kind of lay that down on my lid. Not sure if that's even really showing up, but this is a really nice, kind of densely packed brush. It's pretty good at laying everything down where you want it. I will go with this one. It's sort of like the Tati Beauty one. that's just like a shimmer, you know, it's like a matte with a little bit of glitter in it. And we'll go sort of on the outside of the lid here, work that into the lash line a little bit. And I mean, there's no real getting around this being like a pink eye look, you know, that's how it's going to be. You don't really have a lot of other options. <laughs> with the kind of deep mauve shade here. It's a really pretty blushy rose color that's got a little bit of depth to it. I'm gonna do my crease with that. These blend really easily. Like they blend super, super easily. You can see I'm having to put almost no effort in. They build pretty nicely. And I don't feel like I'm gonna get myself into a situation I can't get out of. Mainly also because we're dealing in blush tones. You know, I think that that's always gonna be easier. If this was all a blue palette, I might be a little less confident, but you know, facts are facts here. These are shades that if <laughs> worse comes to worse, they kind of still look like they belong on my face. You know, makeup doesn't always have to be a challenge. <laughs> I'm gonna dip in on that brown shade build a little more crease here, right in the corner. And as mattes go, that is just about as easy as it gets. I honestly, it's super, super effortless to put this stuff on. And mattes will always kind of call out a low quality formula if that's the case, and these definitely perform. They're very, very pretty. I think this is a great little eyeshadow palette, actually. Okay, 
The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in with that same stubby brush that came with the whole kit and we're gonna go in with some glitters. So I'm gonna start with the palest kind of shimmery one here. And I would liken this to like a glitter shimmer. It's almost translucent and it doesn't have a whole lot of milkiness to it. It mainly kind of lays down a really pretty wet look where you put it. Use that on in our corners here. I'm gonna go, this one's really interesting. It's got a little bit of green in it. Like some of the little flecks in there are like a green gold. And I'm gonna go on most of my lid with that. I just think it's really cool. Like it adds this sort of springy depth to it in such a way I would never have expected to work. And it's all coming together so quickly too. So some really, really lovely glitter there. And then I'm gonna go in with just the slightly deeper glitter here. Go on the kind of outer third of my lid. Like that. And then I'm just going to go underneath my eye with a little bit of just the pure pink shimmer. I'm gonna throw on some eyeliner and some mascara and a little bit of brow mousse real quick and then we will get into these lips and then we'll talk about claims and final thoughts, etc. Okay, so this is actually so beautiful. I am really enjoying this, but uh, I'm gonna get this mascara off of here. Now that it's dried. I did use the new brown shade in the Thrive Mascara. It's absolutely beautiful. Same formula, just brown, real nice. Goes really well with, I feel like, this kind of super soft look. You know, a black eyeliner and a black mascara would have been fine, but I ended up using a brown liquid liner and a brown mascara. Chef's kiss. So let's talk about lips here real quick. I'm going to start with my lip liner, with my Khaki Thrive lip liner, just cause I always do. It's more of like a contour than anything. And I have, like I showed you before, a lipstick and then also a lip gloss. And they are just in the cutest little like octagonal packaging. So this shade right here is called Olivia. And this is actually a really sheer, I mean not sheer sheer, but just a really creamy lightweight, not completely opaque sort of color and I think that it's meant to kind of go on almost like a tinted gloss. I mean, not like a tinted gloss, like a tinted balm, I guess. There's already a gloss. And I'm not gonna put too, too much on because I think that it spreads out really beautifully and I don't want my lips to be all gloopy when I put the lip gloss on. I don't like that look or feel of too much lip product. And there is something about K-Beauty that is very light-handed, I feel like. You know, they have very discerning selective senses of where to put pigment and where to just kind of like let the skin show through or let like a highlighter show through. By the way, I added a little bit of this. I just got this. This is the Ilia Polka Dots and Moonbeams Highlighter. It's very nice. It's a little difficult to get it to work right on a uh, powder, but it's so, so pretty. Oh my God. It's surfing all the reflection that I need right now. So that's the lip color. And I don't wanna put any more than that on because you guys know me, like if I put on a coral lip, even one that's not all that opaque, it's going to take over my whole look. So I'm going to go in with Heavenly, which is the gloss here. And this is not, I don't know, it leaves a little to be desired. I am quite a connoisseur of glosses. And so I do, I think have kind of like snobby standards, but this particular gloss is nothing to write home about. It's just a gloss. It's kind of like almost on par with a lip oil. It's nice, it's nice. It's just not giving me anything mind-blowing. It's not life-changing. It's basically just a translucent pink gloss with glitter in it. So do we need more blush? The answer is yes, we do need more blush. So I am going to add a little bit more of the cream blush with my silly, ridiculous little sponge here. It gets the job done, but it definitely feels like you're using one of those like you know, 
eyeshadow sponges back in the day where you're like, this is definitely working. So convenient. Glad they included this. Like that's how this thing feels. All told guys, I think this is a beautiful face of makeup. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that it is a tonal palette that is right within my happy place. It is so right in my comfort zone. It's just a pinky coral playground. Um, so before I give you guys my final, final, final thoughts, I do want to go onto their website and kind of check it out, see what they're claiming, what we think of the prices of these individually or as a set, what have you, and then, and then we'll put our thoughts together. Okay. All right. So their website is en.deardahlia.com and everything is in us dollars. So they've got the eyeshadow palette sold individually, the lipstick sold individually, pretty much everything sold individually. And then they have these blooming edition sets. And so the one that I got is the blooming edition secret garden collection set. It is listed at $155. I'm pretty sure with shipping and everything else like that. I think that's what put it close to, to 200. The website is so funny too. There's just like snowflakes or cherry blossoms or something. Snowflakes, I think just raining down the page the entire time. Like one of those old GeoCities websites. It's hilarious. So you pick your colorway. There appear to be three. There is Olivia, Victoria, and Audrey. So I actually got the peachier one. I didn't realize that. So Audrey is like a rosy pink whole family. Victoria is more of a purple lavender whole territory. And then uh, I went with Olivia, which is the peachy coral one. And I, I really like my decision. So like I said, that was $155 and the set includes the lip gloss, the eyeshadow palette, the blush, cushion, the lipstick. Oh, there's something else in there. Wait a second. Oh, there's this. <laughs> this teeny tiny little matte lipstick that uh, looks like this. It's very beautiful. It's really nice. I just forgot that that was in there. And then of course, all the sponges and the other sponges. There seems to be a picture of something else in there as if there are these little liquid tubes that I don't have and I don't know what they are. But yes, there also apparently came with it a, a zipper pouch. I don't know where that ended up. And also the notebook and all of the little replacement sponges, but it did not come with a, uh, a replacement cushion. I think out of all of these things, I would have liked a replacement cushion. It also came with this little brush and everything, God bless them, is wrapped in plastic. I'm not going to say that's the most high quality brush in the world, but it is synthetic. She's cruelty free. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I guess, you know, with the samples and everything like that actual items for $155, you know, do with that what you will. I personally think that this was a cool thing for me to try and I'm glad that they have it all as a set. So let's talk about the individual prices. If for whatever reason you think that you might want to try one or more of these, but not all of them. So the eyeshadow palettes are $62 a piece. I think you're better off going for the full set if you're interested in it than just going for this eyeshadow palette because alone it's very pretty, but that's not worth $62 plus shipping from Korea. No, definitely not. The Blooming Edition Lip Paradise Sheer Dew Tinted Lipstick is $34. Again, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but I don't think it's worth $34 on its own. That's like more than a Kosa's lipstick. The lip gloss is $31 and you get 0.21 fluid ounces. They do have a soft focus shine control powder that I did not end up buying. I did not see that that existed. I did do this all on my phone before, which was, probably a really bad idea just because everything sort of like loaded all crazy and I didn't really get to see the full scope of what they had on offer before I was like yeah 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 the set that looks good okay uh the Olivia colorway looks good I think I probably would have liked any of the colorways but Blooming Edition Dual Palette Blusher Duo <clears throat> you'll be quite disappointed if you spent $32 on this okay that's it's such a tiny amount of product and the foundation is $46 and it doesn't come with a replacement I don't think. I don't think there is a replacement cushion in here. So very expensive. All of those things together. I'm going to do some math here. Yeah. So according to this, if you're not counting shipping yet or anything, you save $50 by buying the set versus each piece individually. That is completely up to you. Whether you think that that's f fair or fun or worth it. I would say if it were up to me and I, if I could break the set apart and make it worth your money, 
I would go eyeshadow and maybe the foundation. Those are probably the two that I would really go for, but that's $62 plus $46. You've already spent $100 right there. I don't know. That might be not that crazy, but I do expect I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I expect a replacement cushion. It is an eight free formula, paraben, phthalate, oxybenzone, formaldehyde, artificial fragrances, animal derived ingredients, metalloestrogen and surfactant free, EWG green grade ingredients, Dolly Verbalis flower extract with antioxidant benefits has been patented. So it's got skincare ingredients and things like that in it. And they are exhaustive with their individual listing of all of the ingredients for every single stinking shade. I will not bore you with that. Oh, and I said I was gonna fill you guys in on what the order was like. So the only big hang up that I had was that, you know, yes, you're going through uh, a foreign system if you're in the US. Obviously there's going to be like an unfamiliar interface and there's gonna be some extra shipping charges and things like that. The weird snag was just that it told me that my card was declined, but I was wise to that and I was like, I don't really think my card was declined. And then I looked on my bank statement and the charge was there and I looked in my email inbox and my order confirmation was there. So I was like, okay, well, obviously my card wasn't declined. I got a shipping notification and I was like, all right. so. I don't really know what to do with that information. I just thought I would pass it along to you guys because it's just weird. I, I have no idea, but I did end up getting all of my stuff and nothing weird happened past that, but I just thought that that was worth sharing. So final thoughts. If you're interested in this brand, I would definitely recommend going for a set. There are smaller sets. They kind of group them together for discount purposes. And there are also other discounts that they have on site. You don't have to pay full price for all of this stuff. There are like 10% off here and there and stuff like that. And they run little sales. But I think that buying each of these things individually is kind of disappointing. Like it would be kind of disappointing. Like the cushion foundation is beautiful, but there should be an extra cushion in it. The lipstick and the lip gloss are beautiful, but I don't think that they're worth $31 and $34 respectively. The blush is beautiful, but it's a very meager amount of it. And the eyeshadow palette is unbelievably beautiful. I think it's so pretty and it's such a fun formula to work with. It's super, super easy, but it's $62 and it's essentially a tonal palette, the likes of which you could get from uh, ColourPop or Huda, you know, and uh, some glitter, some really, really pretty glitters. Don't get me wrong, but those are some teeny tiny little pants. Okay. And this is 62 doll hairs. I will say while this doesn't like come to the standard of pricing, as far as comparing it to like a Chiarweiss or a Westman Atelier or something like that, it does still present itself as a very luxury experience. And so that was something that I was expecting out of it. And I think that the main thing that I got out of this was it's easy. It's very easy makeup to use. There's nothing about it that had a learning curve. There's nothing about it that was like, if you're not a professional makeup artist, you're not gonna be able to make this work. It all felt very thought out and very considered. And all of the colors were extremely easy to work with, very flattering on the skin. Everything about it felt fun. It felt effortless. And I feel like the look that I was able to get was really, really pretty. And I will continue using these things. You just kind of have to decide whether that's something that's worth it to you, whether this is something that like excites you on a fundamental level or not. I also just wanted to add that I think that for the quality of the makeup, the quality is good enough in and of itself with the packaging and everything like that. They kind of sell themselves short by including all of the little like stationery and the little mirror and just the kind of like kid makeup nonsense. It just takes away from the luxury of it all. Yeah, that would be my only other kind of critique. So if you are only marginally interested in this stuff and you're not really into the appeal of K-beauty in and of itself, save your money, spend it on something else. There are plenty of really beautiful pink collections out there. But if this is something that's just really enticing to you and you love interacting with just really pretty, you know, the rose quartz marbly packaging and things like that, then I would recommend bundling. It's pretty much the best way to get the bang for your buck. And I don't think that you're going to be disappointed by this entire face of makeup. It's very, very pretty, but I definitely wouldn't recommend like buying one of these products because it's a total rock star. It's just more of like an overall experience, if that makes sense. You have to admit though, I mean, that's a really pretty glowy face of makeup and they pride themselves on being innovative with their ingredients and having skincare packed uh, products and things like that. So, you know, they are really pulling their weight in what it is that they say that they're doing. This isn't just like fun kid makeup. It does have grown up ingredients in it. 
So if you guys found this valuable, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Definitely hit the notification bell because I upload as often as I possibly can, as much as I can while staying sane. And I wouldn't want you guys to miss a video, so definitely get those notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.